Hey, Better Editors, welcome back. My name is Chris, and today we do the impossible. In part eight of our 10-part series in learning Adobe Premiere Pro, we are going to animate in Adobe Premiere. That's right, no After Effects necessary, so put on your MoGraph pants and let's party. Okay, folks, here we go. For my first trick, we are going to animate inside of Adobe Premiere today. Pretty cool stuff. Uh, this is what we're gonna be making. It's a simple logo that I made after looking at some references online. And to get started, we're gonna create a new sequence. Come down here, grab our ProRes 1920 1080 2398 is perfect, but we're going to change our frame size to 1000 by 1000. So we're making a square video frame. And let's change the sequence name to logo animation. And we can just drag this up to our working bin. So this is open on our timeline. We have a good size window to work with. We're interested in the program monitor because we're going to be moving things around, text, shapes, all kinds of stuff like that. So let's grab our text tool, come up to the top left, and let's make a big H. Drag it into frame. Now, that's a big H. I don't like the font. So let's double click it, and I'm going to choose Proxima Nova. Now, Proxima Nova is a great font because it has a ton of font weights that you can get. And if you're part of the Adobe Creative Cloud, which you should be since you're working in Premiere, you get all of these fonts for free. So let's go ahead and grab Proxima Nova Black because it's big, it's bold, it's beautiful. And I want it to be bigger, bolder, and more beautifuler. So that's as high as we can go on our text size. Let's scale it up to 150. Cool. Grab our selection tool, and we're going to move this to the top left corner of the frame, give it a little bit of a margin. And since we're talking about that, let's turn on our rulers. If you don't have an icon down here, you can click on your wrench, come to show rulers. Now I'm going to click a ruler and make a new guide. I'm going to pull that down here, pull it here, and we're just going to make some margins for our logo. And let's zoom into our timeline so we can see what we're working with. Let's drag this out to like seven seconds. All right, and the next thing we'll do, we'll alt drag the H, double click on it, and type an M. Now we've got a bunch of craziness happening over in the corner, but we can just drag this M and pull it down here. Cool. All right, now the thing that you'll notice is this H and this M, though they're the same font family and the same font weight, the M is considerably wider than the H's. And if we use that M, it kind of pushes our graphic over to the left-hand side. So I want to try to shrink this. We could either scale it down or choose a different font weight. And that's what I'm going to go with because I think it will look better. So let's run over here and we'll choose Proxima Nova Condensed. That's obviously too thin. And let's change that to black. Much better. So it's still a little bit wider, but not dramatically like it was. I'll move that there. Okay, so those look good. Next thing, I want to add our handmade craft coffee. So I'll click over in the top right, and our text is going to be huge because we last typed in 400. So let's bring that down to 90. And we'll dial it in as we need to later. Click back on our text and type hand craft. There we go. And we'll drag this kind of right here. Again, doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to finesse the text a little bit. And I want our hand to be Proxima. Let's make both of these Proxima. Lose the condensed. So just Proxima Nova. And we'll just start off with thin. Cool. And this craft coffee, or the craft on the bottom, let's make that black. Okay. Now we're starting to get some drama here. That's looking good. And let's grab all of this and change the alignment so that it goes to the right. Move it back to the corner. And let's work on our kerning. So first things first, let's use our hand and we will stretch that out so it looks real cool. Yeah, that looks crafty and stuff. Let's grab this and I'm gonna make craft much, much smaller. So let's drop this to like 40. I think 40 is okay. And we're gonna stretch that out as well. Oh yeah, that looks real fun. Okay, and I'm gonna stop right about there and let's grab our t and we're gonna push it a little bit this way so we line that text up perfectly great now let's go ahead and grab our selection tool and move this into the top right okay 
All right, one down. Let's do the next one. And we can just drag this over here. And we're going to call this made. And underneath, we'll say C-O-F-F-E-E. -E. And let's select all that text and change the alignment to the left-hand side. Let's finesse this just a little bit more. I want to work on the kerning on made because these two words are a little bit longer than what we have on the top right. So let's make this a little bit bigger, not a lot. And then on coffee, let's grab all of that and we'll kern it down some right about there. All right, that looks good to me. The next thing we need to do is create our line that goes diagonally through here. To do that, we need to use a legacy tool called a legacy title. So say, OK, make sure that this is 1,000 by 1,000, and we'll call this line. All right. To create a line, click on line. And on the inside of our safe margin here, we'll drag it all the way across. And then we have a line. Drag this on top and move it all the way down to seven seconds. There we go. And give it a save. OK, now for the fun part. Let's animate this thing. So to do that, let's go up to Effects, hit Transform, and we'll grab Transform, drop it on. Now the reason I'm using the Transform effect instead of using the Motion effects is because the Transform effect gives you a little bit more flexibility. It can be added on top of any Motion effects you already have applied, and it gives us a really cool option to add some Motion Blur, which will make the final animation look a bit nicer. OK, so grab our line and let's zoom in here to, let's say, about, I don't know, 16 frames. Let's say 16 frames. Select our line and we're going to add a rotation keyframe. And let's make this negative 45. OK, that's good. Let's go forward, say, 12 frames. Add another keyframe, then hop back to the first one. And we want this line to start vertically, and we're going to make it spin to the right. To do that, I want the line to rotate left right now, which means I need to go back to negative 90 degrees. All right, and you notice how we have a little bit of blur up here? That is from the motion blur that we turned on. And let's see what that looks like. We've got some movement. This looks nice, but it's a little stale. So let's zoom in to our keyframes. And on the first one, I'm going to right click and say ease out. And on the second, I'll right click and say ease in. And look at what that's done to our animation curve here. This is showing us the speed of this line. Let's play it to understand a little better. See, it kind of slowly ramps up, goes, and then slowly ramps down. But we can make this a little better doing some manual work to these keyframes. So I'm going to grab this Bezier handle and drag it all the way over here. And our first keyframe, I'm going to pull it all the way back. All right, let's see what that looks like. You see how the line snaps now? It snaps and then eases into its final resting spot. It looks really nice. Now we need to do the same thing to our H and our M. But before we do that, let's jump to this first keyframe and select our line clip and hit M on the keyboard to add a marker. Then go to our next keyframe, select the line clip, and hit another M. Now we know where those keyframes are lined up without having to dig into the control panel. OK, so first thing, we'll jump to our first marker. You can do that by hitting Shift and holding up or down on the keyboard. And I'm going to go to H. And we are going to add a transform effect. Now let's mark a position keyframe, then move to our next set of keyframes that are 12 frames away hit H, and put another keyframe. Let's go back to our first H keyframe. And let's zoom in so we can see what we're working with here. And let's move this down till it's about midway. I'm going to turn on my safe margins. And if you don't have an icon down here, you can go to the wrench icon and click safe margins to do the same thing. Back in our controls panel, I'm going to drag this H until it is about center in the screen. All right, that looks all right to me. And I'm going to pull another guide down to the top of the H. Now let's do the same thing with the M. So right here, we're going to add another transform effect on the M. 
and I'll say position, jump forward 12 frames, go back to our M clip, add another keyframe, and then go back to our first M keyframe and move it up until the top is just touching the line. Great. If we watch this play back, this is what happens. All right, we have some movement, some things are happening, but obviously our H and our M are not moving at the same speed as our line. Let's turn off our rulers and our guides. On the H, we're going to do the same thing that we did to the line. We'll right click our first keyframe and make it an ease out. Right click the second one and ease in. Twirl this open and we've got our graph again and I'm going to pull this all the way down and suck this one all the way up. And let's, while we're in here, turn on our motion blur. Same thing with the M. and see what we have. That looks nice. Let's save that. That looks really good. The only thing left to do is see what's going to happen with our handmade craft coffee parts of the logo. So these, I think it'll be easy enough to just have them simply fade on over time. So I'm going to add a default transition and make it one second and 18 frames. I'll copy and paste that to the front of the handcraft text. Let's zoom out a little bit. And I think I want this text to show up about where that line is almost coming to a resting position. And we'll move it one frame forward just because. I think that looks pretty nice. So let's jump into our coffee shop promo. All right, over here, I'm going to grab our logo animation and let's just pull it right on top of this final clip right here. We'll zoom in. Okay, and the first thing that you'll see is that this logo is way too big. So let's roll through. Yeah, see, I mean, we're covering up the mat and everything else. It's too huge for this screen. So let's scale it down a little bit. That's looking pretty good. Okay, let's go right there. And let's see. what else can we do? All right, I think this logo is going to need to fade on, and I'm also having a hard time seeing it over this white coffee in the background. So let's move this up, and we're going to make a black square that goes behind it to help make this white logo pop a little bit better. To do that, we can go to File, New, Black Video. Again, it's going to ask for your video settings. We want these to be 1000 by 1000, making a square again, just like our logo animation graphic, and we'll drag it into our sequence and drag this all the way out. Okay, now we need the black video to be the same size as our logo. So I'm gonna grab my motion tab and copy it, come over here and hit paste. Now we've got the same size. That looks pretty nice. Um, I do wanna pull down the opacity though. Let's knock it down to like 70, eh, maybe 60%. Eh, let's go back up to 70. I like 70, that looks good. All right, we'll turn off the keyframes because we don't need them on this. And let's add some fades. For the bottom, I want to bring on the black video a little bit quicker than the top. Um, so I'm going to make it 1 second and 18 frames. I'm going to copy and paste that to the logo animation, but make it 2 full seconds. Let's see how this looks. Okay, that looks good, but I think it would look nice if we scaled up the logo a little bit over time. So let's grab this, grab both of our clips, adjust them to end at 30 seconds, and I'm going to set a keyframe, drag it to the end, and set this to like 58. Let's watch it again one more time with some context. That looks good to me. I hope you guys agree. As you can see, you don't have to jump into After Effects every time you need to animate something. Sometimes it makes sense to do it in Premiere if you don't want to open another program or if you aren't comfortable in another program. Up next in part nine of our series, we're going to polish this video until it shines. We're gonna make our audio sound good, we're gonna make our video look great, make sure the colors are dialed in, and get it ready to ship out the door. So we'll see you then.